Hello and welcome to the Aviation Briefing with me, William Hallowell. In this podcast series, I speak with industry and media colleagues about the biggest news stories and topics in the aviation industry. Today, I'm joined by James Highgate, the CEO of Firefly, which produces sustainable aviation fuel, SAF, from uh, sewage sludge. Thank you very much for joining me today, James. Oh, but no, no problem at all, William. Thank you for inviting me along. It's really interesting what you're doing at the moment. Um, you know, sustainable aviation fuel, a huge topic in the industry at the moment. You know, we're talking, you know, globally that this is going to be the, the thing that's going to decarbonize air travel um, and, you know, the industry more widely. But um, Firefly's got quite a unique approach to producing SAF. So why don't you uh, kind of give us an oversight as to how you're doing that? Yeah, sure. Well, um, so we we worked through so Fireflies is spin out from from green fuels, and um, within green fuels, we've been working in sustainable fuels from waste for for over twenty years now, and we recognise that that aviation would be the most challenging area to decarbonise. Um, need large volumes of fuels, um, and you know it's very difficult to decarbonise through electrification or through through hydrogen. You know, so it's a, it, it seems an obvious route for, for liquid fuels. Um, the biggest challenge you always have with the production of any biofuels is the availability of, of appropriate feedstock to make it. So we've, we've over the past sort of 10 years or so through our research side, been focused on what are globally abundant materials that are fully biogenic, i.e. don't contain any fossil carbon, and, uh, and, and, and do, uh, do offer an opportunity to convert into a, into a liquid fuel. And, didn't actually take us that long to start looking at sewage you know we're, it's everywhere we're all we're all uh, contributing to the supply every single day and um you know it, it, it's fully abundant everywhere in the world where there's people but, but the big challenge from it though is it's wet it's full of water um so that we we, we studied and looked into different processes to actually turn this biological material into into a jet fuel and and uh started working with a process called hydrothermal liquefaction but basically we we put the water under under a high pressure which actually causes it to act as an aggressive chemical and break down the biological materials are in there and from that you get a crude a bio crude which um through our our firefly process we then upgrade to to saf along with other other fuels you end up with a product slate of fuels and it is pretty cool you know it's one of those things with you know turning sewage into jet fuel you know it is it is a um i think an exciting thing to be doing but the the really exciting thing is you can actually make some pretty large volumes of this stuff well, as you say, there <laughs> there is plenty of it. it. You know, it's something out of uh, Back to the Future, isn't it? So it's quite, yeah. um, it must be quite exciting, you know, for you. And when, you know, I look at it from the perspective of, you know, a journalist covering, you know, the aviation sector and, you know, sustainability kind of specifically, it's it's fascinating to me, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, you kind of mentioned some of the challenges. Uh, I suppose my first question for you at the moment would be, you know, uh, as a, a a SAF manufacturer at the moment. I know something you're calling on, um, or calling for, is kind of greater investment um, from governments and that sort of thing um, with infrastructure and, and with your projects. Um, what are you kind of seeing as your your biggest challenges at the moment when it comes to the need to upscale uh, the production of SAF at the moment? In particular, when we look at you know uh, the 2050 net zero targets and some of the other SAF, um, you know the EU. Uh, SAF mandates at the moment that have just come into place last year. Yes, well, that's it. So in the EU, there's some great SAF mandates there now in place. They're working, so fantastic. UK, we have some great plans for SAF mandates. They really need, do need to come into law because otherwise, it, you know, it, it, it'd be very difficult to get the investment you would need for what are effectively refineries to be built to produce this to produce this product. There are. Um, there's a there, you know, there's a ready customer there to kind of take all all of the products and certainly with our route to SAF, the fee stock is there and it's actually you know it's a it's a it's a waste that doesn't really have a good home, um, so it does need these policies to be put into place to make sure this happens, which I think will will happen. You know the the um, with the, uh, uh, the 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 SAF mandate in the UK, if that comes into force, it become a very very attractive place to produce the fuel, and I'd love to see the UK become you know kind of a front runner in the in the, in that SAF industry to be able to do it we're great at you know inventing things um it's always you know we're quite we're quite good at inventing things you see them commercialized elsewhere great to do that here it's going to generate 
shed loads of jobs when you look at the the, the scale of this industry and and how much it has to grow. So it should be something that 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 any government should be behind and, and pushing. So when we talk about you know policy at the moment, obviously beginning of twenty twenty four, the last time I spoke to you was at the end of last year. What are you kind of anticipating potentially that we're going to see on the cards for? Um, SAF policy at the moment because you know from my end it seems that as you say you know the government do certainly want to kind of take that that world leading um, approach to it they want to be at the forefront of you know the industry um, what are you kind of looking at at the moment and seeing from your end as you know what can we expect say in the next 12 months as regards to um, SAF investment and that sort of thing sure okay so we've got a um, the, the, the the 10% percent uh, mandate that would be for, um, or we'll have ten percent mandate for uh, a SAF requirement by twenty thirty, which is a you know, driving the, the demand for it, and that will will grow on from from, from thereafter. Um, we will have a, a a price support mechanism which is proposed, and and we're just waiting for that to go into policy, and, and that really is I'm hopeful that we'll see that you know first quarter of this this year. Once you've got that, you can then start to um, you've got some certainty on being able to to finance the project, or at least go out and say guarantee that these things will will make money. And the, um, one of the challenges is we you know we're competing with what is a you know, fossil fuels are basically cheap. You know they're they're they're, they're an inexpensive fuel that, that's there, and these are this new industry needs a bit of a kickstart to be able to get it get it going. Again, I think in the area we're looking at, because it's a, a relatively low value um, fee slot that we're using, you know, we, we're hopefully the, 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 we can we can move forward very quickly and offer something that's relatively competitive in the market at scale. Um, but you still need you still need the, the you know this this price support in place. It is this this already happens in the in the US. You have um, the Inflation Reduction Act, which will underwrite effectively the cost of building these very large expensive infrastructure projects these big refineries which is fantastic uh, and in europe you have the mandate already in in place so you know that there's a guarantee part. so it will happen it will happen here um and it, yeah, but hopefully hopefully quickly because the, you know the risk would be that SAF producers like ourselves say fantastic great you know we've got amazing you know amazing opportunity here to produce SAF, but we can only get it financed elsewhere, so it will happen elsewhere. There's a big opportunity to do it. I'm sure it will, but um, it has to happen quickly. <laughs> so talking, kind of looking at the UK specifically at the moment, I mean, yeah. do you think, um, maybe not, okay, in the next 12 months, but in the next, well, I presume for you, you'd want this to come into place pretty quickly. Um, would you expect there in the UK to be a bit like in the EU, we've got gradual targets, um, you know, say targets for 2030, 2035, you know, all the way up until the 2050, you know, global net zero carbon goal mm. um, for the aviation industry. Would you welcome that? Um, and, you know, do you think that is something that we would likely see here in, in Britain, in the UK? Yeah, so the proposal for, for these, the, a, a, uh, we have the, the, the 10% 2030, which is actually a big, you know, it's a very large quantity of fuel, which is going to be um, challenging to meet unless we start getting on and, and building these facilities in the next couple of years um and then the, the you know the 20 so it's a bigger incremental increase there but once you've got the um the price support in there and it's a you know these are you know viable profitable businesses it will you know it will grow yeah in in europe it is there, there, there's this incremental increase, which is great because i think that's a you know they're they're, they're it's done in a way that they're, they're targets that, that can be met year on year. I don't think it's a particular problem to have it further out and a larger jump to it, as long as there's a you know there's an industry that can that can happen here to to do it. And you know, so we for us we, we we've got supply drivers and and the demand drivers. So it's just kind of two sides from us because this is a material that 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 will eventually get spread, banned from being spread on on land. Um, so we've got to we've got to find a a good you know, beneficial route for it. So there's there's two kind of distinct sides of the business, but both are driving to, to to make this happen. And I suppose, I mean, from you know, from my perspective, it seems like probably a good thing that there are those um gradual targets rather than because mm. I think one of the main criticisms of the 2050 global um target for aviation is it's arbitrary, it's just kind of plucked from yeah. thin air. You know, there's no kind of scientific uh, backing behind it. It's kind of just, you know, right, we'll just choose 2050 because it's so far away. Whereas I suppose with these EU 
um, mandated targets, it kind of requires there to show, you know, um, actual progression, you know, an actual increase yeah. in SAF um, uptake. And I don't want to kind of get drawn too much. Um, you know, I don't want to stick on these uh, targets. But one thing I'm going to have to ask you is, you know, is this 2050 um, target, you know, for net zero, is it likely, um, you know, from a, from a SAF, you know, perspective, or, or is it kind of wishful thinking? Does it depend on governments getting more involved um, and, you know, committing the the financial, the finances, you know, to the infrastructure and the projects such as like the one that, that Flyify is doing? Um, yes, it does. It needs, it needs a lot of support to allow this to happen because this is a new industry, a new industry that has, you know, amazing potential because of that 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 you know the amount of growth that we would need to meet those those targets it's you know it's over you know it, it has to increase exponentially for, for 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 a long period of time um you're going to need that backing behind it you're going to to actually for aviation to meet net zero we need all of these routes to saf to work and to work at scale you know we also are going to need for for, for um you know short flights etc we are going to need electrification we are going to need hydrogen we're going to need all sorts of things in there to 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 meet to meet that goal i'm you know it's a it's a it's a big target i think it's always good to have a really big target that's there to aim towards of course it's going to be difficult we'd be doing it otherwise already wouldn't we but it, yeah i am hopeful i'm seeing some very interesting innovations happening there's already some qualified routes to SAF, as we know there's a lot more that are coming into the frame and it's a good you know if you start looking at by 2050 w- you know, what's going to be happening with the the road fleet is it going to be completely um decarbonized at that point is it going to be electrified well we should be well on our way by by 2050 surely by that point and other modes of transport so you can see where liquid biofuels can be moving towards aviation so no i'm uh i'm i i am quite positive about it seeing what's going on in in, in the background and i said you're, we, we, we're, we're hopeful to be able to play quite a major part in this i do agree with you sorry and, and i think this point having those incremental targets that you can meet year on year at least it gives you i suppose it right it gives you a guide that you're heading in that right direction because you're you know actually it's a big bold target there and if it, if there isn't an incremental target to it yes it could get missed and it's a oh dear we we've we've missed that but I said that this should become a a you know a, you know, a big a big business a big business that's going to uh, that that will will be financially viable and and you know make money so then it will grow but it does need policy behind it to allow it to to happen so we've talked quite a bit so far about about policy um looking more specifically at the industry now um what do you think the industry needs to do all the key players um to ensure that there is, you know, better collaboration on SAF, whether it's guys like yourselves who are doing, you know, who are the manufacturers, whether it's, you know, the airports, the airlines, everybody involved in, you know, mass air travel. Um, what do you think you all need to do to ensure that you meet those targets and ensure that, you know, those, um, you know, targets are being met? Yes, yeah. I think everyone's got to recognise that there is a, there is going to be some cost to this. You know that's reality. In the short term, if we're going to grow this, there is going to be some cost. But we we have to we we don't really have a choice, do we? You know, the aviation emits two percent of of global carbon emissions. It's something that needs it needs cleaning up, and you can't really clean up in any other way. So I think everyone has to be aligned that, that you know, yes, there may be a very very small increase in you know the the the, the cost of flying, but that's the reality that's there, and it's the, I don't think we have any other choice around it. I think. When you look at, um, you know, we're talking about drop-in fuels here, so infrastructure, airports, etc. You know, this 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 can just go straight into the mix. So again, I think if there were incentives to, to Heathrow are doing now, for example, to to encourage SAF usage, I think that's fantastic. But everyone's got to be clearly aligned to, okay, this is going to happen. You know, do you know what? It is probably going to cost us a little bit more in the short term, but we need to do this for, for, for these reasons. And actually, you know, the, the, I think there has to be an over-recognized, you know, recognizing this, you know, it is a, you know, it's a, it, it's a polluting industry that, that, that needs to be um, cleaned up. And this is a way to, to clean up. I think, I think there are, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, willing from, from certainly from the stakeholders we're talking to, to make this happen. But I think there is also worry about 
you know to make sure there's no competitive distortion that that you know and how it will impact the you know the paying customer for this i've seen some interesting modeling i can't remember the numbers off the top of my head but when you actually look at to to you know what the um the 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 the, the price port would be would be needed to allow it to happen you're not talking about a you know really a significant amount on the on on, on ticket prices um I also don't think it can really be voluntary because it's more difficult. To do. It kind of has to just be accepted that that's what it's going to, what it's going to be, you know. And we're seeing it develop well in Europe now. The policy. I don't see why we shouldn't be any any different to that. Um, you know, as it stands in 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 the US, having the um, you know the 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 the, the actual um, facilities, uh, having having the, the the money there to underwrite debt to build these facilities, I think is also really you know, important and you kind of need a bit of a balance between the the two but on the plus side of this this is you know these are the, the jobs that would be created from this are going to be phenomenal these are green jobs they're you know they're, they're across the whole sort of chain of, of of employment needs that you'll you'll need so it's it should be a really really good thing for the economy to actually you know actually crack on and, and build a big SAF industry here so there is, I do want to move on, but there is something that you said that I do want to pick up on. Um, so you mentioned incentives. I don't want to drag it back to policy again, but mm -hmm. um, it is something like, you know, government incentives, not just in the UK, but in Europe and, and worldwide. Is that something that we're likely to see? Is that something that you think would um, improve uptake? And I suppose my second part to that question would be, I don't want to draw out, uh, you know, a cynical answer from you, but if we are having to use financial incentives to encourage um, you know, stakeholders and key players to, um, you know, decarbonize through SAF. Isn't that kind of an indictment of, of the industry? Because they should, you know, we, they should want to, shouldn't they surely um, adopt it for the sake of, you know, as you say, the planet and the environment rather than, you know, because there's money to be made from from governments. <laughs> well, I think it is going to, so we've got things like the emissions trading scheme. So, you know, actually, the, the the cost of fuel is increasing because there is effectively a carbon penalty on there, which is increasing. And, you know, without it's, it'd be very difficult for an airline to say, do you know, we are going to commit to this amount of stuff and the, and the, the you know, with, with others not doing it and the, and the general sort of customer might say, well, okay, we're not going to pay that extra to do that. We'll go with this other airline. So I can, I can see the challenges that are that are that are there, but the, the actual true cost, of, the the cost of fuel to the airline is increasing now because there is this 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 payment for the um for, you know for the for the cost of carbon. Um, everyone wants to do it, but you kind of it needs to be able to it needs to be able to work in reality. And you know you, you, you these incentives do need to be there, but they also need to be there and known and for a long enough period of time to get projects financed in the first place to do it. And it's quite easy with with AVA to say, well, okay, how is this going to be decarbonized? Well in there isn't really another choice in the short term. There there, there really isn't. You you they could be um could be looking far into the you know in, in, in the future say right we're we're looking at you know, new technologies that need to be developed to be able to 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 electrify or use hydrogen or or, or, or whatever for, for these aircraft but you do need a step now you need something to solve it now because if those things don't get invented don't happen well that's a that's a big that you know that's a big problem does that so, answer it yeah yeah no well yeah it does yeah <laughs> um, when we talk about sustainability particularly you know on a global scale um mm -hmm. and, and where saf is concerned I think there seems to be this um, potentially, um, well, this potential issue that, you know, it, it's all very well, the Western uh, world, uh, you know, kind of saying, let's let's go for SAF, let's, you know, set all these um, green targets. But where does that leave developing nations and developing economies? Because they don't have the money or, or the facilities or the infrastructure to be doing, you know, the SAF projects that are happening here and in the US and in, and in Europe. So, how do we ensure that you know they aren't left behind and that this is really you know a global effort? Sure. Well, it, well, well, when you look at global mandates and, and targets for South, they, and and you are starting that you, there will be policy changes across the world, sure, to make this to happen. The challenge may well be in getting this the, the sort of first facilities up and running. Um, we're you know, it, the, I, I can only read. I'm, I can talk about it. I suppose with our technology hat on and saying so we're looking at 
um, developing markets at the moment. And they look really, really exciting because there's a lot of sewage there, you know, and this is a, and, and in, there's a lot of um, development in the wastewater treatment works. Um, and so you can, and, and this is stuff that's happening at the moment. And so actually you think, wow, actually, we, you know, there could be a lot of fuel there. We we, we were in um, Mumbai recently and looking at the projects there. If you look at the, the population of Greater Mumbai, 25 million people, well, actually, there's enough sewage there to provide 80 percent of the fuel needs of of the airport which wow. is mind-blowing you know that's not i'm not talking about safanies that's aviation fuel needs you know that surely that's got to to work there is that material there that will you know it's a it's a challenging waste um let's put it to you know let's put it to good good use but it needs these first of a kind projects happening proving that the technology works and then it will open up the, the ability to to finance it. And as I said, once you start generating the jobs, et cetera, from it, these are good things to have in, in any country. And OK, so moving on again, because um, there are, you know, there are a number of topics, I think, because this is such a, a huge in itself subject. There are kind of these yeah. micro areas. Um, let's talk about um, climate uh, campaigners. You know, they kind of say that SAF is not, what it's been led us or led the you know the the world to be that the aviation industry is kind of bigging it up trumping it up um they have accused people you know like airlines of of greenwashing um yeah. and they say it's performative um what's your assessment of that because i know you've said previously that you know this is the solution um how would you you know pitch it to those people who are skeptical and who say that you know actually saf involves a huge amount of land um and crops and all those other sorts of things um and, and money as well you know economic speaking um that are going to have an impact also yeah so go, if you look at the last thing that you, it, uh, look at the economics of it and said this is a new industry that looks very promising and will generate a lot of jobs it's also a lot of this industry is using and there, there's um skills transfer from things like the oil and gas industry that can go into as well, which is a good good thing. You know, if you can encourage people to be focused on building refineries to turn sewage into jet fuel rather than than, than crude oil um into jet fuel, I think that's that's a that's a that's a that's a big positive for the you know for the planet. So on the economic side, yeah, I, I when this grows, this is a this is a good thing to be doing. It's a good industry. I don't see unless everyone stops flying that there's another solution. You know, we got into this as a as a business to we you know we we want to have a a disproportionate impact on on climate change. We want to do what we can do to 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 slow what's going on. You know, so die. We, we so we're into this and fully convinced. That, okay, we this is the 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 most difficult to decarbonize sector. How is this in reality going to to get decarbonized and in reality, it is, and it can only be from sustainable aviation fuels. And if you're looking at that, you've really got to start drilling into where where are the feedstocks coming from? Are they waste? How much of it can be from waste? What are those waste materials? You know, are you, you know, when we've got you know, completely renewable energy, you can start to look at, you know, uh, e-fuels, et cetera, but, you know, down the line as well. So there's there's drivers to make it happen but you kind of need to build that industry first you can't sit back and say well this is no good you know should be doing doing this there's 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 going to be some better option in the future well you know you, you everyone can look out the window and see what's happening with the climate we have to be doing things now we have to do things now that are um technically possible and and, and i think we're, we're we're a connected world i think it's good it's a, it'd be very difficult to say you know people can no longer fly but I do feel that 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 um, people who who are flying should probably be be paying for a more sustainable solution for, for that. So if if it's a small increase in, in ticket prices, um, also when you look at the connect, well, you know, it, so we look at within our company, we look at where we fly and what what we we do. There, there's some things that we do which you know, you, if you're going out to say, for example, long flight to India and back, well, we're establishing a a um, uh, on the with the greenfields hat on a a, a a waste we can order bar diesel project there well you know that's got potential in the next five years to save a million tons of, of co2 emissions so you know that flight was worthwhile doing do that we couldn't have done it from here 
so I, I think there needs to be a, a balanced view on this. Um, but I don't see, you know, genuinely, I don't see any other solution in the next, you know, really 10, 15 years. Well, look, thank you very much for coming on the podcast today. Uh, there is so much more I do want to discuss <laughs> with you, but, you know, it is such a huge topic, as I say. So I imagine in the future, you know, I'll continue to be reporting on this. So the next time there's a Great. big SAF story, I might grab you on again for 20 minutes or so just to come on and talk about developments, <laughs> you know. Um, but look, yeah, no again, worries. thank you very much, James Highgate, CEO of Firefly. Thank you. No, again. thank you. No, thank you so much, William. Really, yeah, really interesting discussion. Happy to 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 talk about. It. It's my uh, my my <laughs> my my love at the moment is talking about <laughs> sewage to staff. It's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's very cool. Well, Brilliant. thank you very much for listening. Cheers. This has been the Aviation Briefing with me, William Hallowell. <laughs>